In this video on advanced arrays, we're going to be looking at 2D arrays, and we're going to do an example where we take values from a text file and try to populate a 2D array with those values. And the best way to show this is by actually just doing an example. Um, so let's just jump straight into it. So we're going to be taking um, a text file. So let's have a look at that text file that we're going to use in this example. As you know, most of you who know Mr. Long know that I'm a superhero fanatic. So I've got a text file full of superhero names. So there we got a whole bunch of superheroes. And you'll notice that the names are separated by a comma. So this is a comma separated uh, file. And so what we're going to do is we need to extract those names and put them into a string grid. So that's what we want to do for the, today's example. Now, before I get there, I just want to remind you about how we're going to do this. So we are going to assume that we don't know how many values are in uh, the text file with regard to how many uh, lines there are, because each line obviously represents a row. And in that row, you can see that each line has five values. So we're going to always assume in this example that there are going to be five values in each row. We just don't know how many rows they're going to be. So let's start off with that. If we want to extract row one, we want to extract row one. We're going to start off with the word Hulk there. So that would be the first value that we put into the first column, basically, or first field of row one. So we need to find the position of the comma and extract it and use our string handling skills to do that. We're then going to extract the next value, which would be Batman, and we're going to put that into the second field or column two technically of row one and then we're going to say hey, there's wonder woman that name will go into the third position and then uh, spider-man will go into the fourth position now the last one's a little bit tricky you'll notice at the end of the thing there is no semicolon so just remember that when we do our calculation we can't find the position of the comma basically it's going to be whatever's left over in the string from the text file that will be going into that fifth value. So just remember that there's a little trick that we might have to do when we are doing that. So let's just go to an example. Let's actually look at the actual code. Okay, so here we've got our uh, little program. We've got a string grid. We haven't set up any details in the string grid. I want to actually do that using code as well, making sure that we've got the right spaces and stuff like that. I want to make sure that we've got that nice and done. So we're also going to, the second part of this uh, video, this very same video, we'll be taking the values from the 2D array and putting them into the string grid. And there's the button that's going to execute. So let's just remind ourselves, there is our text file with all our values, all our superheroes. They're all having a lovely meeting together, all the DC and Marvel guys meeting together. So let's click on this button to see what we're going to do. Okay, so the first step is basically extracting the values from the text file and putting them into the 2D array. That's the first step. The second step is going to be trying to create the string grid uh, details and properties so that it can fill in nicely with all the values from the 2D array. So first of all, for those of you who know your text file handling, we're going to go through our normal text file algorithm or recipe. If you're not sure about that, go look at our text file video on reading from a text file. So there we check in to see if the file exists, and then we do our normal assign and reset. And here's where things change slightly. Okay, so we do not know how many rows are going to be in our um, our, string, our our 2D array, but we are going to set a limit. See, I've got a limit there. I've got a, an array called array names, which goes from 1 to 20 and 1 to 5. So there is a limit. So there's five columns, but there are 20 rows. So there is actually a limit. So I can't just carry on extracting values and putting them into the 2D array. So I need to go until the end of the file or, or until we go over 20. So this basically, this loop means keep extracting names while we're not at the end of file and while we aren't over 20 um, rows. The moment we get over 20 rows, then we need to stop or while we reach the end of the file, we need to stop. But if one of those two things happen, then we'll stop. But until then, just keep doing it. So we need to put a limit. So this is the little extra little bit that we've put in to our text file handling, uh, or, or read from a text file uh, algorithm. And then we've got our regular read in from the text file into a string called SLine. So the very first line of SLine, the very, very first line time it runs, it's going to look something like that. That's the first line in the text file. So what I always do with text file handling is I just inside the text file while loop, I just work as if I'm working with just that first line, and then you can believe that the loop will go and do it for all the other lines. 
as long as your lupin termination cases are correct. I'm just jumping here just to show you. Remember, don't forget to close your text file. Okay, so let's look. What are we doing? Well, I need to keep track of which row we're in. So I've got a little row variable over here, which is going to tell me, hey, this is what row we're in. So I initialize it to zero, and we've extracted a line, so we increase our row. So at this point, row is going to equal to one. We are in the first row in this case. So we are in row one. What do we want to do? We want to extract all of those values. Now, I, I'm basically going to be finding the position of the comma, extracting from one to the comma minus one, and then delete until one to the comma every single time for, for that one, for that one, for that one, and then for that one. But the problem is the last one. The last one doesn't have a comma, so I can't find the position. So that one's slightly different. So that's why, although there are five values, I'm only doing the for loop for the first four. Because the, that those four are all going to be treated the exact same way. So all I'm doing for four times, so for column, I'm going to have a I call variable, one to four. I am saying find the position of the comma, copy from one to the position of the comma minus one. So from one back off a little bit. So there it's going to extract Hulk, put it into name, and then delete all of that. So then basically after that, that is where the starting point of the S line will be. And then the next time it does it, it'll go till the position of the comma, minus one, and then and so on. So that's the extraction. And that is from our string handling videos. If you're not sure, go watch our string handling videos. That'll show you that. But every time I extract a name, I want to put it into my array. So I'm putting it into array. Now remember which row we're in? We're in the first row. So I want to put it into row one. But which column? Well, this is the first value that we're extracting. And that'll be the second, and that'll be the third, and that'll be the fourth. So whatever the value is in my for loop will be the one that represents the column. But Mr. Long, what about the thing? We, we can't leave him out. Well, we won't leave him out because, because there is no comma. This algorithm over here won't work. So once we finish this, we will know that once we've deleted everything, we've deleted that, then we've deleted that, then we've deleted that, S line will be whatever the last value is. So once the, the, the for loop has completed those four values, we know that whatever's left over in S line is the last value. So, hey, this is a little hard code here. Hey, in row one, we're still in row one, in position five, because we know it's always going to be position five. Go put S line, because whatever's in S line, after we've deleted, there we go, after we've deleted all those sections four times, the only thing left in S line will be the thing. So the thing will be placed into that. Okay, and then we'll go over here. Okay, we jump up to our while loop. Are we at the end of the text file? No. So we'll get the next line and do the exact same thing. Extract the first four, put them in, and then just, hey, at the last bit, that last guy, we don't want to leave him out. We don't want to leave a superior out. Imagine if you leave all these guys out. They would get very angry. Okay, very angry. So don't don't leave them out. Okay, so that's what we do. We just make sure that we get, get them into our rows. And then we close. And what I've done is, um, this is just a little thing for me. I used a R row value, which was a local variable. I've got an R total row, which is a global variable, just to tell me how many rows are actually being used. So if I ever have another button, I can go from one till R total row so that I don't go into any blank spaces that don't have superior names. Okay, so that is our extracting from a text file into the 2D array. But now, what happens if we want to display it? Okay, so let's go. How are we going to do this? Some hard code here. First of all, we're going to, uh, our string grid, you'll see our string grid is not ready to take in these superiors. It's not prepared. We need to prepare it first. So the first thing I want to do is say, hey, the row count will be however many rows there are, plus one. Why plus one, you ask? Well, we've got some labels. So we want to add those labels. And then the number of columns, well, there are five superiors. So it should be five. Why six? Ah, but we've got labels. So let's put the labels in. So that I want to put little labels on the side. Um, and because the names are quite long, they're longer than mine. My name's a very long name because it's long, but these are much longer because they've got more characters. Uh, so we're going to set the default column width to 100 so that they're quite long, a little type of row. Or, yeah, each column's quite long enough so they can take all the name. So I'm going to put this. He's going to put the little labels in. You can say from 1 to 5, that's going to be at the top. Boom, boom, boom. So that's going to be the values of here. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's a good thing we're expanding it. We can say, hey, just put in the word, the, the number R. So it'll be a, a, a one. So in, now remember with the string grid, the first value is the column, and then it's row. So in row zero, column one, put a one. In row zero, the first column, I mean the first row, 
column two, put a two. And so, so at the top here, we are going to see a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five whenever that one appears. And then we're going to do these ones. So we're going to go from one till R row because we don't know how many rows they're going to be, but we do because we've recorded it. That told me how many rows there are. It could be 20 because that's the max it can take, or it could be however many lines there are in the text file, whichever one is the smallest. So it's going to, hey, go from one till seven or eight or 20, and in column zero, the first column, position one, put group space one, and then group space two, and then group space three. So on the side here, we should say group one, group two, group three, group four. We've got nothing in zero, zero, because that's a point you put in any value there. And then my display, this is a normal display in two or a string grid, a 2D array into string grid. You are going from one till the number of rows. You're going to go from one till five. And in the string grid, you always put the column value first and then the row. And normally when you've got your, um, your 2D array, it's the other way around normally. But if you're not sure, the easiest way, the way I cheat and check, well, it's not cheating, it's, it's clever. Cleverness, Mr. La. Is I look here, hey, the first value goes from 1 to 20. So if I come down here and go, which of those variables are most likely to go till 20? It's probably that one. So which is so that one must be the R. And we know that the second value always goes from 1 to 5. So then that makes sense that the loop that goes from 1 to 5, that will have to be that one. It just makes sense. Obviously, it makes sense, Mr. Long. So there we go. I should be a superior common sense man. Okay, so let's run and see if it works. Let's see if we can get these superheroes all together in a table. So I'm going to load, and boom, there we can see one, two, three, four, five, and group one to seven. And there we've got our teams, our little groups. Okay, so as you can see, all those superheroes are teamed up together. Um, so there we go. Looks quite fantastic. I'm sure some of these guys don't like being next to each other. Uh, so maybe, yeah, maybe some of these people won't enjoy being on the same team, but it's not their choice. They're in the text file. That's how it's going to be. So that is how you can load information from a text file into a 2D array. In this video, we made reference to our text file, read from a text file video, as well as our string handling videos. If you haven't seen them, go have a look at them so that you can see how to do those algorithms if you're not too sure. As well as other videos that are Delphi related, please go to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, tell us what you like. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.